first time, my name is Professor Kisanagas. I'm over at the Business Department, and I want to welcome you all uh, to come in to the meeting today. This is the last meeting of the semester, and actually this is the last series of meetings that we had coordinated with the Career Service Center, and uh, the first one being on how to write a professional-looking resume, which we had a couple of months ago. The second one was on, um, on uh, internships, and then the final of the series, again sponsored by the Career Service Center, is how to develop your interview skills. Because that, I think, is, is very critical. Because uh, when you eventually go for that job interview, it's, it's very important uh, to know how to do well in, in your interview. So uh, here this afternoon, we have our uh, speaker, her name is uh, Suzanne Grossman, and she's going to give you a lot of great tips on how to do well when you do interview. So why don't you all give her a nice round uh, hand of applause. Thanks. Thank you so much, Professor Kasimanakis. It's my pleasure to be here to represent the Office of Career Services. We're located here on campus, which is, doesn't get more convenient than that, in L429, for those of you who haven't uh, attended either of the other two that we, we um, presented. I'm here today to talk to you about interviewing, interviewing skills, how to become a pro, how to get the job you want. It's, um, it's a multifaceted effort that you have to build. It's a step-by-step -step process. I'm going to try and take you through the different parts of it. And then uh, I'm going to try and show you some of the software that we have online where you can really, really work uh, in a very powerful and dynamic way on interviewing. Uh, it's new uh, and it's probably um, something that you haven't ventured into yet. So to begin with, uh, first of all, can I just see a show of hands for students that have never had an interview for a job? OK. And even for those students who have, it can be a daunting situation. Most of the time, you really do want the job that you're going for. And so you might have anxiety about it. You might have concerns. You might have a sleepless night. And ways to avoid that are to prepare. Prepare and practice. And so in the step-by-step -step process, the first thing that you're going to do is really look at the job listing, the notice. If you got it online, if you got it from a newspaper, if you got it from a career services center here or some other job, uh, um, bank, for instance, Workforce One, if you take a look at the job notice, it will have a lot of information. It's almost like a cheat sheet for you. Not just the name of the job, what the company does, what the announcement requirements tell you you have to have, and you're going to try and, and make your abilities geared for that job itself, specifically, particularly. The things that you do in a job are what make you the candidate that they want for the job. An interviewer is not going to be interviewing you if they don't believe you can do the job. So the first thing is, when you send out your resume, and we've already had a workshop on the resume and cover letter, if your resume is not and cover letter are not getting you the interview, they need to be reevaluated. But if you're getting interview opportunities and you're just not getting the job offers, that's when all of this will come into play. You're going to have to read not just the job notice, but all kinds of information on interviewing. You're at an amazing time in time and space here at the school. Everything is on the internet. When you go for an interview in order to prepare, you should know what the company does. We've had students that come to on-campus recruitments and the interviewer will say, um, do you know what we manufacture or what we do when the student is clueless? Now, the student may have been completely capable of doing the job successfully, but the heinous crime was that he didn't know 
what the company did. And his, his education here was superior. His grades were great. He had exactly what he needed. But he couldn't explain what it was that he was going to do for the company. And the company can do a lot for you. Some companies have um, tuition reimbursement. Now, that may be a question you might ask during an interview. But that's not the first question you're going to ask. You're first going to be, you're not driving the interviewer, the interview, the interviewer is driving the process. But you can be prepared. The, inter, the job itself may offer medical benefits, so you get a lot out of it. But to begin with, you're going to have to demonstrate what you can do for the employer. So your first help is the job listing. Ganesh, you, you have a question? Okay, you're going to have to wait. I'll do that after with you. Have a seat. Don't worry. Um, so that's the first step in the process, is to prepare yourself just by knowing what the job is. The next part of it is really an individual preparation and, again, breaking it down into doable steps. You have to prepare yourself, your clothes, um, how it is that you want to communicate, um, mentally and psychologically prepare yourself. You may know somebody else who works for the company. You can speak to them about perhaps what their interview was like. Were they interviewed by one person? Were they interviewed by a committee? Because you may have experienced an interview, many of you, where you've been interviewed by one person. But if you're now going to be interviewed by a number of people, it would still be helpful to know that. Reading, read, 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 go on the internet, um, just read, you have to read. And some of the software that I'm going to show you is going to require that you read too. And it's an interactive uh, package of software, so it's kind of entertaining and it's really, really helpful, but be prepared to read. So now say you've, you've decided what it is that you're going to wear. If, it's, if you know the company has casual Friday, not for you if your interview is on Friday. If you're going for what you think you're going to be able to wear jeans and a t-shirt for the job on a daily basis, don't wear jeans and, and t-shirt for the interview. You may not have to wear a suit and tie, but be prepared to dress appropriately. Um, I brought a couple of accessories, things just to give you an idea of do's and don'ts. I tried to dress today about as professionally as, as I can possibly get with toned down, one color, white shirt, not a lot of jewelry. Um, number of pieces of jewelry for a woman probably is 13, including rings, earrings. Earrings you may be able to get away with counting as one, depending on what you're wearing, but not a lot. Belt counts. Belt counts as jewelry. Earrings on guys, take them out. Earrings on your nose, take it out. Okay, you may, f it, you may be going into a creative artistic environment, and then the, the leeway is a little broader. I'll give you an idea. I brought another pair of shoes. These are the ones that I'm wearing. These are the ones that I can also wear with this outfit. Looks reasonable, it's not, it's not outrageous. But it's a little aside, especially if you're going into a conservative company. So you have to use your judgment. Neat, clean, pressed. And this is not something that you can just jump into. It really requires you to plan it, to put it into your own head, to picture yourself and pull it together. The higher the level of job that you're going for or you want, that's what you should dress for. Now, if you're going for a secretarial position, that's one thing, but you don't want to come in in a skirt that's too short, pants that are too tight. Um, I'm wearing a black belt with a silver buckle today. This might be something that you could wear if you were going to a design company. You could even wear it as a necklace, but it's a huge statement. So for general interviews, you're going to stay away from something that's very flashy. Once you have the job, it's a little bit different. 
and you sort of have to get, depending on what it is that you want to be doing, you have to be able to make these judgments generally, and you can make them slowly, but you have to have gotten the job and be in the working environment already to get a sense of what you can get away with. Okay, even casual Fridays doesn't mean you should come in and rip jeans, okay, in a dirty t-shirt. Now I can tell you, if you go online, and if you have a pen, I'm gonna be giving you lists of things that you can look for on the internet, lists of like the 20 or the seven hardest questions to answer in an interview and stuff like that. But if you go on zappos.com, has anybody ever tr gone on zappos.com, the shoe company? It's amazing, shoes, clothes, everything now. Their work environment, if you Google um, television, I would probably say it's a television magazine format um, on zappos.com work environment. Young people in cubbies, they're rollerblading in the office, they break for parties. This is what this company has found they have to do in order to keep their young workers who are on um, a dot-com business. People aren't coming in, they're with each other all the time, so this is what keeps it up, upbeat. So, but that's very unique. Most of you are not going to be able to, to find that kind of environment. Um, business itself is much more conservative. Um, I brought a couple of jackets just so you can see. They're jackets. If you have a job already and it's not so conservative, you can get away with them. But let me just show you. Sorry, my microphone was on the jacket. It's a technical difficulty. This is, red is a power color. Red is a power color. If you're gonna wear it to an interview, be prepared to be that person, and you can be. It's a power, power color, much more dynamic than any other color you can wear. Black, navy, blue, brown, or, or you can do any time. Pinstripes, you can do. Anybody have any ideas why this jacket might not be, even if it's red in a power color, what makes it inappropriate? Good one. Anything else? Okay, even if this had a straight sleeve, it would have more potential. But this is great if I were going to be an assistant designer or a production manager in a fashion company. This is a statement. And you can make the statement but you'd better be making it appropriately, okay? Um, music industry also, Ganesh, you can get away with a lot more. My son-in-law is in the music industry, and there are times when I'm amazed they all wear jeans and T-shirts and just and windbreakers. Very, very casual, but that's the music industry, and not if they're going to a corporate meeting. Do you understand the difference, Ganesh? Okay. Corporate meetings are never casual. I guarantee it. In any industry, the person who's CEO is going to be dressed. Maybe not in, in a tux or a tie and a jacket, but he's going to be dressed in a nice shirt and, and slacks. Okay? Um, so now you've prepared your clothes. You've looked at the job um, description. You know you're a perfect candidate. You've gotten your clothes together. Together, Say you've called. Now you call or you've contacted in order to make an appointment for an interview. So the person that you speak to is a person who can help you with more information. You're going to be making a date and a time at their convenience, at your convenience. Be early not just on time, be, be early. If it's a rainy day, you can take other shoes with you. If I were going to a job interview, I doubt if I would be wearing these shoes to try and travel an hour and a half from Queens to Manhattan. Why? Because I'm gonna be hobbling by the time I get there, up and down stairs on the subway or the bus. So you have to plan accordingly. You don't want to walk in with a whole bunch of bags. So this kind of strategy 
is what you have to make happen for yourself so that you come in in an organized, disciplined, and focused way. If you can come in focused that you're going to help this employer not only do the job but make them look good, you're the person that they want. And now we're going to get to the communication stuff. Communicating about um, yourself can be intimidating. I don't think anyone in this, well, is there any, let me do it this way. Is there anyone in this room who is comfortable with talking about themselves and their, their real strengths and really thinks they can ace an interview right off? You do? OK. How many t have you interviewed before? Yeah. Have you always gotten the job? No. <laughs> have you always gotten the job you've applied for? No. OK. Ganesh is talking, too, right here, this young man. OK. Um, it's rare, and it takes a discipline to read your resume, read the job description, make them match. Make them match, and, and it works a lot better. One of the things I want to show you, and I've spoken with you about um, optimal resume already, for those of you who came to the, to the, and actually it was Mrs. Peluso who did the cover letter and resume. You go to our website, and it's the Career Services website. You're going to go in as student graduate, and along here, these are the two power, uh, powerful packages of software. Perfect interview, because perfect interview is what our goal is here, and optimal resume. Both of them utilize a camera and a microphone so that you can record yourself. It has questions and it enables you to really either become optimal at interviewing or to, to successfully have a perfect interview. So I'm going to show you. Um, let me just briefly go through here. I want to make sure to cover um, some things. Always in, in answers, try to be positive. If they say, tell me about a weakness that you have, they really don't want you to expose your weaknesses. What you're going to do is you're going to try and find something about you that someone else may perceive as a weakness, but turn it into a positive. You may say something like, um, well, I find that um, I'm, I'm a perfectionist um, you know, of some kind, and in some cases, in creative environments, that might not be uh, a real asset, but I think in this ac um, accounting or bookkeeping position, I think it would work well. Okay, so you've taken something about you if you're a perfectionist um, and you've turned it around into a positive thing. They really don't want you to know, they don't want to know your weaknesses. They want to know how well you communicate. Um, interview questions, um, some interviewers have pet peeves. So these are all things that you can pull off the internet. One of them is called interviewers pet peeves. And for some interviewers, students that, or it, people applying for a job, tend to answer very briefly, too briefly. And they may ask a more probative question, and the person still doesn't expand about themselves. So they're going to look at that as a negative, because they're going to have to work with you. If you're not open in some ways, it's going to make it difficult for them. That doesn't mean you have to go on blathering for too long, because that's the other extreme. If you go to the other end and you don't stop before you've said too much. So it really requires you to get in sync with, with the person that's interviewing you and what it is that you need to say. And, and really, knowing your resume, writing your resume, is a big part of interviewing. The information that you write in your descriptions of your responsibilities for the positions you've held 
are the words that need to come out of your mouth about what it is that you're going to do for them. So that's why you really need to know, read both of them. Um, so that was communicating too much and communicating too little. A lack of focus is another pet peeve. If an interviewer asks you a question, you can pull a couple of things you know, that might be randomly related and pull it together, but if you start going off on all these tangents, that's ineffective also. So you need to be focused. One interviewer's pet peeve is someone that does not have enough, or any is even worse, eye contact. You may be asked a question, and you don't have to begin answering immediately. You can think for a moment. If you don't understand the question, you can ask them to repeat it. You may get more out of it the second time. But once you start answering, it's really necessary to briefly look at the interviewer. If you can't, if you're so nervous, you really need to at least glance at the interviewer. You may not stay focused on them for too long, but you really need to have eye contact. So this person is saying that somebody that goes to answer a question and is looking at the floor and looking all over the place, and if the, if the camera is the interviewer, um, it's really distracting and it's not effective. So you have to work on that. Before you even get to the video, you can work in a bathroom with a mirror. Go in the bathroom, tell your family what you're gonna do, close the door, and say, for instance, you can imagine someone saying, hi, my name is Suzanne Grossman, I'm with Human Resources, and I'm gonna be interviewing you today. And when they're shaking hands after they're finished, you can say, hi, hi my name is, and say your name. Good, firm handshake, not a, a wet fish kind of limp thing, okay? A good handshake. So good eye contact. Two, of, two last ones, one is slang, and, and it's not appropriate in an interview. You really need to be up to par in terms of communicating and using good vocabulary words. You don't have to act like a rocket scientist or a genius, but appropriately, you have to have a good vocabulary and communicate well. And this is where, if your resume is written well, these are the words that you can say um, and then don't lie. Do not lie. Do not exaggerate. Do not lie. Don't lie on your resume. Your resume is supposed to be accurate up to the point that you hand it in. So if you hand it in today and your GPA today is 3.9, but tomorrow it's going to be 2.5, well, that's tomorrow. But you have to know more and more com companies are requesting transcripts. So you may put down 3.9 and they're going to get it and it's going to say 2.7 or even 3.2 and there's a discrepancy. So you can leave your GPA off if you don't know, but your, even your GPA has to be accurate if they're asking you about um, information and, and honesty. There are inappropriate questions that employers can ask, and I'll show you on one of the, um, the software packages that there are a list of those as well. Let me just, let me go into it. Um, first, I'm gonna try and do perfect interview. You will have to go on, if you haven't been on perfect interview yet, as create a new account. I'm going to go on as me. And I'm gonna try and show you both, but they're similar. And I'll show you this one. I don't know if any of you remember when I did Optimal Resume, the interviewing part was there but we didn't do any of that. So now, once you're in, and now this is where the reading comes in, okay? One, this is like taking an SAT or any kind of standardized test. If it's your first time, and usually 
when you've d done an SAT, you've done a PSAT, so you've practiced. All the directions are the same, so you don't have to waste time rereading. If it's answer six out of 10, then you're answering six out of 10, and you're familiar with that. That's how students get higher grades on these standardized tests. Okay, it's not a mystery. They've done um, tests from booklets that, you know, in books, maybe even online, but books that you get from Barnes and Noble on these tests. Well, this is the same thing with perfect interview. So here it says, select your level of work experience and the type of position you are seeking. The selections you make here will determine what kind of interview questions you will see and hear. So right now I'm putting college undergraduate and I'm putting entry level. Some of you are not at an entry level. Some of you are higher than that, but for the time being, let's just leave it here. Then it says continue. A short interview with seven to 10 questions, a medium 10 to 15, a long one is 15 to 20. So if you are at an entry level, uh, you may still get a long interview, but to begin with, just to practice, and then here it says let perfect interview make the selections, or if I hit I want to make the selection, it says down here, please hold the control key to make multiple se selections. So I might say openers and closers, previous work experiences, and qualifications, and then I hit continue. Am I doing the video capture? Yes. Am I doing Windows Media's? Yes. So you don't have to use the video capture, which is the camera. You can still go through the process of hearing the question and practicing answers, but I want to do it with the camera so that you can see. It says if you are using a firewall program, so hopefully I turned it off yesterday I was here. Okay. Okay, I'm going to go out of this one. Let me just minimize it and see if I can get in straight away on optimal um, because this is what we configured for. And I want you to know I was on perfect interview just a few minutes ago, so. So you're going to have to configure your computer at home. Now, this is Optimal Resume, where we were when I was, no, yes, I was here with Mrs. Peluso. You find it on our website. Here's the resume, the, co the cover letter, new portfolios, the assessments. Now, these two are the two that you can use so that you can practice video resumes and interviews. I'm only going to try and cover the interview part of it today. I'm gonna to cross my fingers and hope that I get there. This we're gonna call Business Society, because this is where I am. And this is November 18th. And we're gonna start interview. Invalid, okay. And this is where the reading comes in. You've got to read it to know what you're doing. Here we go. Continue interview. Lisa, okay, so on this page, take, it took about that long to load. Us, to, to load. There's a behavior, there are different kinds of in, interviews. Now here, I just want you to see this. I told you about in, inappropriate questions. There's an entire section here about inappropriate questions. They're not allowed to ask you a variety of questions. Your race, your religion, your sexual orientation, um, whether you need childcare, whether you've been um, arrested. Have you ever been arrested? Not allowed to ask. But have you been convicted that they are allowed to ask? And you must be honest about it. And there's a big difference between being arrested and being convicted, okay? But there's a huge difference. They're not allowed to ask. So you can go through each of these sections. This is what I was telling you about before. A panel in interview as opposed to an individual interview. There's a huge difference when you go in and meet one person or you're going in and you're meeting six people 
What's the etiquette? It's easy to know to shake hands and introduce yourself to one person. But if you're being interviewed by a panel of people, you're going to shake hands and have eye contact with each and every one of those individuals. OK? And you need to know that. You can't be taken aback by it and not know. You have to be sure. You have to have confidence. Um, so here, I'm going to leave behavioral. I'm going to pick four questions, spoken and video. Again, you can do spoken only, you can do written, and you can do no recording. And then you pick an interviewer. I'm going to pick Craig. This woman is very interesting. They're all different personalities. She is like very confrontational, very like, like this kind of. And you may have to deal with that in an interview. You may have to deal with somebody who seems like they've had a drink for lunch. OK? But you still have to be 100%. So there are different interviewers. And you really should do this more than once. And you can do it. I'm going to pick Craig. And I'm going to do con continue interview. Now, this is where the video capture I enable. Here I am. So what I usually do, because I've worked with this program before, is if I look at the screen, do you see how, I don't know, do you see how my eyes are cast down? If I look at the camera, and now I can angle the camera, and if it's, like, if it's far blurry, whatever, you can focus the camera you know, so it looks well. And I look at the camera as if those were the person's eyes. So when I'm going to answer, I'm going to look at the camera, OK? Because I've done this already. And when you play it back and you're, you find you're looking at the screen as if it's the person, you're getting the wrong feedback. You need a, like really to get it together. So make sure your microphone is, is connected to the computer. Now, I have a different microphone that I'm going to switch to. So give me one second while I switch them. Hello, 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 hello. Is that on for you? Can you hear that? You can. OK, so hopefully it's capturing it. Let me just. So then you go on and you continue the interview. And I hope it's capturing it. Um, so here, down here it says read. So you could read the question. So briefly tell me about yourself. Here, play the question. And it, should, it says preparing question. And I think the fa I have other things open. You know what? Let me close perfect interview. That might speed it up. OK, here we go. And it gives you the percentage. I hope it's loud enough. Briefly tell me about yourself. OK, now I can make that louder just for the next one, I believe. OK. And then when I'm ready to record, this is where I'm going to record. Now, briefly, it's hard to know on instinct how long or how short, but it's a conversation that you're having with someone. So I'm going to hit record. And now, also, I had on my computer, I don't know if it'll do it here, we'll see when I play it back, that it didn't, be, it didn't feed me back my answer until this was at about 16 seconds. Okay, so I'm just going to wait till it's there, and then I'm going to give you an idea. Okay, so um, I've been in career services for approximately six years. I have my master's degree from the City University of New York. Uh, I love what I do. I work in a variety of ways and capacities. Um, I present workshops to students. Um, I counsel them on an individual basis, and um, we do um, assessment of statistics. And I really love what I do, and I think I could do a good job for you as well. So I can hit stop. Now it says saving your response, and it gives this little thing down here. In the meantime, just so you see, I'm going to play over here for you as well. To coach, he will give you an idea of the kind of information that should go into the answer. In perfect interview, the other one, there are 
people, other people answering the question for you, usually two if you hit it twice. First there's a young woman and then there's a man, so you can do that. Um, and so you can model yourself to answer the question based on the way they're answering it. So it really is good, good practice. What you do is you save and now you can play. And let's see where it picks up. And hopefully it did. Okay, so it's preparing answer. So um, does anyone have questions about this? It's really a very, very powerful thing. If you have a half hour to sit down and, and learn the program and then set it up and do an interview, it really, really prepares you so that you're not nervous and you're not anxious about it, and that's critical. Um, I've been in career services for approximately six years. I have my eye contact. The University of New York. Uh, I love what I do. I work in a variety of ways. Okay, I think I'm going to go back to the other microphone and see if that does it. Okay. Um, does anyone have questions for me as we're going along? Questions, specific questions? Yes. Does the computer tell you? I think you get a feeling. You know if it is. And what you can do is this. Let me get this microphone away because that's probably what's doing it. Hit coach. And also, in perfect interview, you'll be able to do this. I'm sorry. I Is it appropriate to say you'll? Weaknesses, right? The interviewer is asking this open and no, nice good question. Person, looking for some introductory information from you to see how you handle yourself. Give a short answer, an engaging response, ending on an interesting <laughs> note so that the interviewer is more about your personality and ability to provide a concise answer than the actual information you expose. Your response could be, I'm a recent graduate with a combination of skills seeking a position with your company. My undergraduate internship experience has given me a strong interest in the field and inspired me to pursue a career with a quality organization such as yours. I'm sorry it wasn't loud enough, but it really is effective. Let me see if I can get it to... No, it's not letting me. All right. Um, it was a good question. The question was, if the interviewer says, tell me about your weaknesses, is it appropriate to say, can I get back to that question? No. When the question I'm telling you to begin with, the interviewer is the one who drives the interview. If you're asked a question, you have to be prepared, if they ask a question, to answer it in some way. Most of the time, people get caught in a negative way in that, well, you know, sometimes I'm late because the bus isn't on time. You know, you have to avoid it. Now that, so if you want, you can go online and, and ask um, t tough questions to answer. Um, in an interview and see. Um, there are inappropriate questions an interviewer can ask you, but there are also inappropriate questions you can ask. Don't ask when you're first interviewed. Um, don't ask about salary. Don't ask about vacation time. Don't ask about medical benefits. After you have the job, after you've been made a job offer, it's it's fair game, but not to begin with. And so reading, if you read these things, you will avoid the, the, the obstacles 
okay? Um, so all you have to do is, is go online sometime and do it now before you're going for an interview. It'll stick in your mind. You know, it'll stick with you what not to ask. So here what you do is you go on to the next question and you don't have to, and first of all, you don't even have to go through this whole process if you don't want to. I set up four questions and here are the four questions. So I could go into you know, one of the lists and take a look at all of the questions there. I could have made this a 20 question entry level and all those questions would be here. So if all you want to do is study, this is another appropriate way of doing it. So give an example of an obstacle or major problem that you had to overcome in your career. Yes? Once again, um, it's a good question. If you're going for an interview for an internship, what kind of information would you give? And that's very similar to a job in that you're going to tell them about you, that you're a student here, what you're studying. Um, perhaps you can relate the courses that you took. And especially if you're taking the class for credit, if you're taking the internship for credit, which more and more that now is required, the requirements to get the internship are the courses that you can talk about that you took that are preparing you to do the job that they want you to do. And it's appropriate in any interview, whether it's an internship or um, a job, to act appropriately eager. Right, it's inappropriate to go overboard, okay, but, but it's appropriate to act interested and eager that you're going to want this job. And you know, I see by, by the, the description that it's everything that I love to do. I once had a job interview, I was a, many years ago, I was a costumer for the theater and I was dragging my portfolio all over Manhattan on a hot summer after I graduated, and I had an interview at a company in the city, and I had these small sample garments, and he said something to me, how something could be done better, and I said, oh, I hate doing that, and he said, well, that's the job we have, and I said, oh, I could learn to love that, and I did, I got the job, and I learned to love that, and I got promoted very quickly. So if you work yourself out of a, you know, putting your foot in your mouth very quickly, you're also good to go, okay? You don't want to put your proverbial foot in your mouth, but there are ways of extricating it. You just have to be prepared. You have to be in the moment. Um, I loved what I did then, and I love what I do now. You know, I see you all as works of art in progress, and this is my chance to help enable you so that you can create you know, really good opportunities for yourself. There is nothing short of practice, practice, practice. Now you can trip your way through interviews and reinvent the wheel. You can do that. Just go in there cold and slouch in the chair and you know, hang out and figure out what to do and see by the person's face, you know, the look on their face that you're not hitting the mark and then go on and do it again at the next one and maybe now sit up straight and, you know, make a, a minor improvement. Or you could work at this and go in with a firm handshake, good eye contact, sit in that seat like you own it. Don't perch on the edge of the seat, okay? But this is preparation. This is envisioning yourself. How are you dressing? Up to the point we're trying to go to bed early the night before. So don't leave it to the last minute to find the directions to where you're going. You've got to be right until you're walking out of the interview, you've got to be on a vision quest. Get that picture and make it happen. Most of the time, you're gonna get offered the position if you do the work beforehand. You should have the luxury. I have students say to me, well, what happens if I get, over, you know, if I get offered both jobs? Well, isn't that great? Then you can decide. Is one closer than the other? Does one pay you more than the other? Are the hours better with one of them? That's a great decision. 
but you've got to prepare everything right up until, until you're walking out of the interview. And again, if you're sending your resume and you're getting interviews, you're good to go. If you're getting interview appointments and then you're getting offered jobs, then you're on target too. Okay, any questions, other questions? Good point, yep. And I think especially, I mean, in my opinion, if you're wearing red and it's not like neat and just done, it especially looks like careless. So you can wear like a new, more neutral tone and that way if it's, you know, if it's not, if you haven't done it the day before, you're still good to go and it depends on the job. If you're going to be a receptionist in a very conservative place, I don't think they're gonna want you to come in looking like, um, like a salesperson at, at Zappos. You're just gonna have to absorb the information. And someone may even say it to you. They may want you for the job, but they may say to you, lose the red nail polish. And then it's incumbent upon you to do that. Yes? A couple of things. The answer basically is yes. That's why you are there, because something about your resume and or cover letter is what they need and want. Now is the rest of the package there? Are you a whole package? Are you all there, or is it just, I mean, because you have to understand, some people are capable of getting 4.0 GPAs, but have no internship experience, have no interaction with customers or clients, and that may not be what they want. Someone else may have a 2.7 GPA, but be phenomenal with clients and customers. And that's what they're looking for. To decide what? You lost me. If you what, 6,000, if you? Okay. Okay. And you reach an accuracy of 95. Would that employer decide that, okay, this is what? Ganesh, any criteria is up to the employer, the human resources people. Any, any criteria that they want. If you're, if you're one candidate and you are better in one thing than another one, another criteria um, or versus another person, that may be the decision that makes them decide, that alone. It, but it could be anything. It may not make a difference. It may be another reason that they want someone else. It's entirely up to the human resources person. It could just be a question of timing. It could be that you were there in the right place at the right time and someone else is an hour later. Someone else may be late for their interview, but you were early. How appropriate is all of the behavior? How easy is it for them to envision integrating you into their work environment? Both perfect interview and optimal resume are tools that you should use. Optimal resume also has video interview, where you can prepare a video interview to upload for for uh, an employer. Now, there is an area that I haven't covered and I'd like to if I have time, yes? Telephone interviewing. It's very new, Ganesh, let me get this in. It's very new in the last few years to efficiently screen a large number of employees to get a pool together that they can work with. So you may have what's called a phone interview first. Someone may call and make an appointment with you and you need to be available at that time. Someone may call you and want to interview you right then 
It's a whole other level of etiquette that you have to develop, and you have to develop it quickly. Because what if someone calls you and you're walking down a busy city street, there may be fire engines or ambulances going by, there may be mothers walking with crying babies, you have to deal with it. Are you going to be able to get yourself into an appropriate environment quickly? Or do you have to say, can I get back to you? I'm, I'm on public transportation en route. So you're going to have to think about this before it happens. The phone numbers that you leave are how they are going to contact you. So you may get a message at home. You may get one on your cell phone. So you have to strategize how is the best way for them to get you. My cell phone, for instance, for the last few years, I don't get my voicemail. It could be for a day and a half. And somebody will say, you know, you didn't call me back. What is the problem? And <laughs> there's nothing on my phone. How am I supposed to know? So you have to do what's right for you to, put, to position yourself, really, in a powerful way. Maybe a message at home is better, and then you can call from your cell phone. Is your cell phone technically good enough to do this on? If you have a cell phone where you're in and out, you need to stand still where they can hear you so that they're not saying to you, you know, I'm losing you because that's a killer. It's hard enough answering the question the first time. You don't know what they've heard, what they haven't heard. But a phone conversation is perhaps how you're going to have your first interview. And they can tell how you're communicating. They want to meet you. Well, you have to know your schedule about when you're going to be available if they, after the phone interview, they want to set up a face-to-face. -face. So there's a lot of multifaceted, multi-leveled thinking that you have to go through to be successful. And you know there are other ways of, of approaching employment. You may walk into a company cold with your resume, but the bottom line is you're probably going to be interviewed by someone whether it's from a receptionist to a clerk to anything higher. So you have to really be prepared. Any other questions? Wait, Ganesh, one sec. I asked to answer a whole bunch of yours. Any other questions? Yes? Good question. Good one. When you come to a place, you may be the only one sitting in the waiting room. You may not. As I said, if I've come from some place and I'm, I have to change my shoes, the likelihood is I'm not doing that in the environment that I'm going to the interview. I'm doing that outside. I may come in from the rain into a lobby. There may be a bathroom on an upper floor. That's all personal stuff out of the way you're going to do by yourself, not in the elevator, but you're going to change your shoes. You may take off your raincoat, close your umbrella. You're, making, you're creating the package that's going to walk into a business environment. When you're in the business environment, you're going to sit as quietly as you can. No fidgeting. You may bring a book. You may bring a crossword puzzle, um, but you're going to First, initially come in, introduce yourself to the person that's there, that you have an appointment. You may know who the interview is with. I have an appointment with Mr. Craig. And you know, so they may say, oh, you know, let me get someone to, to take you to their office. Um, if the, you haven't been invited to sit down, you can say, is it all right if I have a seat? Because you don't know if you're waiting 30 seconds. Or they may say to you, someone will be right here. Then just stand there. So again, there's no set answer, but you have to be in the moment and on best manners. So when someone comes, they may take you to the next place. You don't want to be brushing your hair in someone's office, taking out a mirror, putting on lipstick. Um, you know, this is all stuff you have to do beforehand. When you walk through that doorway, this, this is the persona, this is the business person that you want to present. Okay, your tie has to be in place, you know, 
um, everything. Check that your zipper is up, you know, like whatever it is what that has befallen you in the past, this one is the right one. This one is the new one. So whatever mistakes, and we are all accumulations of situations, you bring that with you. You bring that baggage with you, so you're going to sit quietly. In terms of exit strategies, they may say to you, do you have any questions? So there are, you can Google that also, questions appropriate to ask an interviewer at the end of an interview. And there will be a whole list. Um, so I think it's appropriate to be prepared with two or three um, questions. You may have questions like, well, um, can you tell me what kinds of things I'll be doing in this position? Um, it may be an entry level position and you may, they may give you an idea that they're interested in you and you can say to them, well, can you tell me where this position, you know, what other positions this one leads to or might lead to? So you want to be prepared um, for each of these scenarios. And the more prepared you are, the calmer you're going to be. Uh, the same way that, say, the first 15, 20 seconds that someone looks, maybe 30, that someone looks at your resume, it's the same thing with you. The first few moments that someone is interacting with you leaves an impression. The person that, that I called to make an appointment for a job interview, once I got friendly with them after a while, they said, I thought you were a little pushy when you called, but I really wanted the job. You know, so I was asking questions. Well, can you tell me who's going to be interviewing me? And so I knew I wanted that person's name. I sometimes can lose it. If I'm meeting a lot of people, I know I'm only going to, to really hold on to two, maybe three names out of a group of six to 12. Three, that's it. After that, I'm like a blank. So I wanted to know the name of the person that was going to be interviewing me, but it was funny to get the feedback after. Yes? Meeting, okay, meeting up someone at a job fair, which we're going to have in the spring, by the way, and you really should come for the practice of it because it's the growing trend in how most of you will find a job. Meeting someone at a job fair is pretty similar to meeting someone for an interview. It's a little different in a sense that they're going to be taking your resume, they want to know a little bit about you, but it's more of an opportunity for you to find out about them. You are one person talking to one representative. They're going to be talking to hundreds, so they're not going to get into the same depth with you. But this is an opportunity for you to find out about the kinds of positions you may be a, appropriate for more than one position that they have. So you want information. Generally speaking, when you go to a job fair, you're going to receive information about all of the employers that are there. So read up on the companies that you want to go to. Again, strategize. If the line is very long at one company that you want to see, but very short on the other, well then by all means go to the one that is short first and then, you know, see. Now, if someone else is talking to someone at the company where the line is long, you can listen. You can listen to the questions that are being asked and the answers that are being given. It may create other questions in your mind or it may answer the question that you were waiting to, to hear, at which point, you know, when it comes time for you to hand in your resume, you may have other information that you want to seek. But a job fair gives you the opportunity to see many, many employers and the employers to see many, many potential employees. Um, so it's a little bit different. It's more intense. It's an opportunity for you to deliver your resume face to face um, and to ask questions. Hopefully, we've had students get jobs at our, our job fair right there. And um, we've had students that have gotten jobs afterwards. And we've got, had students that use the information from a job fair to get a job even a year later because the information is still good. Did I answer your question? OK. And really, come again, practice. Coming to our job fair is a big help. 
Because again, you're getting all this information and what, where are you putting it? And you're delivering your resume. Is it smooth? Is it neat? You know, all of these things and practicing at it is enormous in terms of success. Practice, practice, practice. We can help you with um, optimal resume and perfect interview, but in terms of um, in technically getting it to work on your computer, you can see you can still get the questions and practice with it. And on perfect interview, you'll see there's coaching and there were alternate answers. So it's really very dynamic and, and worth it for you to invest your time. Any other questions? What? Sure. You, they can definitely do that. They may tell you to apply online. That could happen too, but it's still a contact. You have someone's name, and it makes a big difference in order to con continue the communications process. So I hope that you can see that this is an orchestrated effort you have to make. You're the tool. You're the one that you're selling. You're the, you have to brand you. And everything that you bring to this process, everything that you're aware of that you can check off on the list, yep, did that, yep, did that, yep, did that, showed up on time, good to go, you know, all those things. You can tell how an interview is going. It may not hinge on one question. But the whole thing together does make a, a big impact. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Vicki. It's our pleasure. It's our pleasure. I hope so.